Tiger shovel nose catfish have amazing patterns. Hi, what's going on friends? My name is Brandon and welcome to Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. I love sharing my experiences with aquatic animals with you through science, stories, and art. It's my goal to raise awareness of our beautiful bodies of water and the creatures that live in them. Please stick around to the very end to hear about this month's charity opportunity. Today we're going to be discovering the South American river waters of the tiger shovel nose catfish. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Pseudoplatystoma fasciatum are known as tiger shovel nose catfish or barred sorubim. The name Pseudoplatystoma is Greek for false flat nose. They are a species of long barbel catfish that live in tropical South American freshwater river systems. They live in the Amazon, Carantian, Essequibo, and Parana river basins. If I butchered that, I'm sorry. They prefer murky deep freshwater water systems. This can include rivers, streams, lakes, ponds, and flooded forests. They are nocturnal and actively rove shadowy, murky, and vegetation-filled bodies of water. They love hiding. When I think of a catfish, I think of a large American catfish laying in mud all day long. But this kind of catfish swims all night long. They can be found in the midwater and benthic, close to the bottom of the body of water. So how am I going to paint a fish that prefers moody, poor visibility water? That is a great question, and I don't exactly know yet. I know I want dramatic lighting. I might have a darker background and make the catfish the feature of the painting. I work in three phases, blocking in, modeling, and detail phase. I start with big brushes and large movements, working with thin layers. This gives a base coat, so I know where the shadows and midtones go. I don't want thick paint that could be seen when I add a layer on top of it. Then I move to modeling. This phase I start setting my darks and start fiddling with my colors and textures. I use mixing white in this phase to keep my tones muted. It makes the painting look more realistic. Since I am going for realism, that is a good thing. I make sure to look at my reference photo a lot. I spend most of my time looking at my reference photo and comparing it to my painting. Then I move to my detail phase. Here I start using titanium white in my color mixing to br bring out the really bright highlights. I use titanium white sparingly. It is easy to overdo and blow out the colors. I also use smaller and smaller brushes in this. Let's move to physical appearance and behavior. What are we looking for when identifying the tiger shovel nose catfish? It can grow up to three feet in length. It has a forked tail, so we can take a fork length for this fish. It has an elongated cylindrical body with a flat or flatter stomach. This allows the fish to have a lower profile when sitting on the ground. It is gray, silver, sometimes olive, and black. It has beautiful black stripes or squiggles running almost vertically along the sides of the fish. That is where the tiger in its name comes from. They have a flattened elongated face with long barbels sticking forward from the mouth. These barbels are used to detect their environment and prey in dark, gloomy water. Their dorsal fin is central mass, and they have a adipose fin. That is an extra fin behind the dorsal fin and before the caudal fin. They have large pectoral fins that reach out to the sides of the fish, and their pelvic and anal fins are small. All their fins have stripes or spots on them. This helps with camouflage. They are a striking and beautiful fish. Let's move to some behaviors. Tiger shovel nose catfish have long thin barbels that point forward out of their mouth. This allows them to see and feel their way in dark and visually impaired zones. Think like a blind cane for a blind person. It allows them to feel their terrain. Like other fish that we have learned about recently, this fish loves exploring flooded forests. They love hiding and rubbing against vegetation, but unlike the red-bellied piranha, they don't snack on their hiding place. But they will ambush prey. 
This brings us to our next segment of the adventure. What do tiger shovel nose catfish eat and how are they doing? They are carnivores. They eat fish and crabs. This can include cichlids, loricariids, and caracoids. I'm not sure what those are. I couldn't find anything on how they feed, so I don't know if they gulp their prey, chew it, or just swallow it whole. There wasn't a wide variety of data for me, and so that makes it a little harder. So how are they doing? The IUCN Red List has them listed as not evaluated. They are highly fecund and reproduce quickly. Now fecundity is the ability to reproduce many offspring. It is estimated that a large female can produce 150,000 eggs per kilogram of body weight. Now, not all of the eggs hatch and become healthy adults, of course. But that is great numbers for an individual. Tiger shovel-nosed catfish are fished and used in the aquarium trade. Apparently, they are delicious and have soft, boneless meat. They, I mean, they have bones but they aren't tough and sharp like some fish. So preparing catfish steaks takes relative ease. They are also used in the aquarium trade because they look cool and live for 10 to 25 years. There are healthy breeding programs, so wild fish don't need to be taken out of the wild. From what I can find, looks like we are doing a great job at preserving them in the wild and not introducing them into non-native waters. Good job. Let's move to our last segment of the adventure. What was my personal encounter with the tiger shovel nose catfish and how is the painting coming along? I am in my detail phase. This means I am playing with my highlights and using small brushes for small detail. I work in sections moving from one section to another. I use Liquitex Basics for my paint. This paint is thin and loves playing in layers. It allows you to see three or four layers deep. This gives my paintings a depth and movement to them. I make sure to stand back from my painting every so often. It allows me to see what my painting needs. It also lets me see if I missed anything or any detail. I'm not trying to copy my reference photo exactly. I want the same feel and dimension of my photo, but it doesn't need to be exact. So what was my encounter with the tiger shovel nose catfish? I saw this fish at the Odyssey in Scottsdale, Arizona. I was there with a friend, and I love how I can spend one day at an aquarium and get months worth of content from it. This was in the monster fish exhibit. All the fish in this tank were huge. This one was swimming quite fast in the encounter. It took me several shots on my camera to capture it. Apparently, they are active swimmers. I love the patterns of the fish. They look like there would they could be hidden messages in this fish. I looked for a while, but I didn't see any messages in this one. Have you ever seen the cow that has spots that spell out cow? I wanted the fish to have something like this. But so anyways, I was watching the fish and the whole tank in awe. Everything looked ginormous. As humans, we think we are the largest and most important animals on earth. In times like this, where you can feel small, in the grand design of things, is where I feel the humblest. I feel like I could slink into the shadows and hide in the foliage of a slow-moving river, just like the tiger shovel-nosed catfish. This painting is finished. What do you think? I think it turned out great. I had to fiddle with it just a little bit uh, just to get the composition that I was looking for. But that's all right, that's painting, right? I really love how the patterns turned out. I kept seeing all these letters pop up and different shapes. At one point I saw an upside down dinosaur. It was really cool. If you would like to subscribe and ring the notification bell, it would help this community grow. 
This month's charity opportunity, I am going to be helping the Hope Creek Food Bank. It is my local church's food bank, and it's with uh, everything that's been going on this year, this last year, they really need help. And so I just want to reach out into my community, help those people. So on an average week, we might help 200 families or more. I know when everything was locked up and we were in quarantine, we had over 500 families to help. And so if I could just donate a little bit of time, a little bit of resources, uh, anything really helps, then I can help my community and help those people around me. So how does this work? I take portions of my sales from the previous month and then I apply that to this month's charity. So whatever I make last month, I help for this month. Whatever I make this month, I help next month. And, it's, and so on and so on. I will leave links down in the description. Did you know that helping this channel and this community helps not only charity, but also another local business? So I sell all of my paintings. So you can purchase the original, as well as limited and unlimited prints. The original has glitter, glass bead, gel medium, and pearlescence on it. My limited edition have this as well, so that they are as close to the original as possible, and my unlimited do not. I use Feather and Fox Print Company on Whidbey Island, so that they make really high quality prints for me. They're museum quality gicle prints, they're amazing people, amazing quality. I love working with them. If you're in the shop or if you order something from them, let them know that I say hi. They really appreciate it. So you're helping charity and two local businesses when you're helping this community. It's really good and it helps outreach and reach the communities in my local area. Thank you so much for watching. Spread love, curiosity, and creativity. I've been Brandon and I will see you in our next adventure.